Uh, today with us, we have one of the oldest uh, person known in India in the art of storytelling. She has been uh, in this trade for about 25 years, has done this professionally after evolving from being a humble teacher and a librarian. She has her own experiences and stories around that. And thereafter has gone on to train about 85,000 people across the country and different other parts of the world. An extremely well-traveled woman. And for us, uh, uh, there are at least about eight or 10 of us who are alumni of the Kathalaya Academy of Storytelling. And for us, she's been the teacher and that guru who has also shown, told us stories and lit fires within our belly and in our chest and given us a lot of light in terms of taking on a journey of new beginnings. And um, we've spent a lot of effort, both me, like with Akansha and several others on this call, Aditya, Rasika. I'd like to invite uh, Geeta Ramanujam from Bangalore, uh, master storyteller, over to you for the stories from across the seas. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Akansha. Hi. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, great. I know you're waiting for stories. And I know that uh, stories and storytellers, you know, they get mighty excited, especially when they have a lot of listeners. Now, uh, I can't see all of you, but then, you know, I, I know that you're all watching there somewhere. and. Uh, if you want to ask me later on, maybe you can send me the questions or, you know, you can write to me in my mail ID. Uh, I'm sure while I'm telling the story, you might want to interact with me. We'll see how much is possible because then it stops the flow of the story. All right. So I'm going to go ahead with my story. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, wonderful. From Ghana to all. Okay, great. Wonderful. So, here is a story. And the story comes all the way from the Arabian folk days. All right? So, you know the history behind the Arabian folk tales? I'm sure you will. Because there was this lady, now you'll have to find out that name. So I don't want to give you all the facts. And she sat over a thousand and one nights, every night, telling the Sultan a story. So naturally the stories were long. Okay, so here is one of those tales that I'm going to narrate to you. The deserts of Arabia. It was a beautiful, lovely, silent, quiet night. The sands were also sleeping. They were just, they were just whispering the winds over the sands, you know. And it was sparkling because of the moonlight. You know the sands and the sand dunes, if you see for stretches and stretches, they are so romantic. They are so beautiful. And if you just see sometimes, you'll find a single camel going, you know, with a hump. And you'll see one man probably riding on that camel. Or sometimes a lady with a veil. And she might be Probably caught in her own thoughts, isn't it? Yeah. So here is that desert. And near that desert, at the end of that desert, there was a beautiful, lovely palace. And that palace had a sultan. And the sultan loved the colors of the moonlight. So he had a turban on his head, which had stars and moon, a beautiful blue one. And it had little crystals on it. And those crystals, which he loved to go deep down inside the sea sometimes when he went far away from the desert. 
and he loved to adorn himself with a long cloak. And he wore a lovely yellow satin cloak. And he sat on a huge throne. And he was a very kind-hearted sultan. He was also very compassionate. He was a great giver. People sang. Mati kahe kumhar ko tu kya rundi mohi ik din aisa hoega and the Sultan was very happy. Music and dance and wonderful. Now, he had a begum. You know, in those days, the begum, they had a, a veil over their heads, okay? And they always were very shy and used to say, Hi, Allah. And she adored the Sultan very much. And now he had seven children, like the stars. You know, there's a constellation called the Great Bear. And if you look at the night sky, it's like a question mark. And it has four stars. And in, in, in Hinduism, they call it, I mean, in the Hindu uh, term, they call it the Saptarishi. So these seven stars, they always loved, he adored this great bear. Uh, bear, especially on moonlit nights when he looked up at the sky. So now, he had exactly seven children. Six of them were daughters. The last one was a son. So now, the youngest daughter, her name was Suraya. And next to that was Prince Ahmed. Now, Ahmed was adorned by everyone because he was the only son. And in those days, again, we have to go with the culture, right? In those days, they'd love to have a son because the son would be the next heir to the throne. Now, it was a custom in those days that when a boy is born, he also has to go to the school. Now, we didn't have schools like what we have now. No buildings and no, uh, you know, staircases and playgrounds and all that. They learned different arts. So when the boy was exactly eight years old, now you're following the story, right? How many sisters? Are you noting it all down? Are you writing it all down? Or are you remembering it on your head? Remember, seven children, six sisters, one Son. Very good. Yes, I see the answers. Great. Now, this young Prince Ahmed was eight years old and it was time for him to have his learning and his education. The Sultan was so delighted. He was so happy. Every day was a celebration. Now, it was at this time that he had to Leave to partake of his son. Okay, so that was the time when he called an old mullah, the mullah who had a long beard, and he was a wise man. Now this mullah, you know, he had been a teacher and a guru for many. He was quite detached. And he looked at Prince Ahmed and he said, I'm going to take you with me. But I have one condition. That wherever I go, you come. Whether the wind is swifter than I am or your thought is swift, I don't know, but I'm going to take you along with me. And you will not ask me any question, okay? You will just implicitly trust me. It was not only obedience. It was not only respect. But what we call as reverence. So there, the 
looked at Prince Ahmed and said, I like you, boy. Prince Ahmed just stood there and said, yes. Now he went along with the mullah. Where did they go? Into the long stretches of the desert where nothing could be seen for miles on end. Now there were little caves, you know. People used to, like some people say Sufi saints used to live in these caves. People meditated in these caves. If at all you go to Istanbul, you will see a place called Cappadocia. And you'll see a lot of caves over there. You just go inside the cave, it's so beautiful, it's so cool, it's so restful. You, you will actually feel that experience of all those saints who had met it. Okay, so now he took him into that desert and long, 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 long time of walking, 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 walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. And walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. For many years now, the education was for eight long years. The Sultan in those days, no SMS, no WhatsApp, no telephones. So the Sultan just entrusted his son to this guru. So he took him into the forest. And to teach him a lot of things. In the meanwhile, before he left, his sister Suraya, she was very fond of her brother, Prince Ahmed. So she came and hugged him. I know today it's not possible. We can't hug each other. But she hugged him and she said, don't leave me at home. Prince Ahmed was also a very smart, wise boy. And he said, well, I have to go and I have to have my education, isn't it? So Princess Suraya felt, uh, skipped a heartbeat when she saw her brother going into the distant desert sands. Well, eight years passed and there was a day when there was a stormy night. And there, were, there was a lot of rain and the storm and it was a very memorable day because the Sultan knew that that was the day that his son would return after the eight years. Now you know, the son would by now have been what age? Eight years he left. Eight years later, he's returning. So what is his age now? Beautiful, wonderful. So great Vihan, great Vani. Okay, so he was 16. And he was a handsome young boy. A handsome young man. So he was returning to his kingdom. The Sultan, he made all arrangements. He said, come on, you have to make 24 types of pastries and sweets and everything, namkeen, whatever. And his wife also, she said, Hi Allah, my son is returning today. And she made everything. They lighted up that palace and the king was so happy. Now the previous night, because he was going to return the next day. So the previous night when there was rain and storm and everything, the king, the sultan, was anxious. Now he came outside. And he had a beautiful garden, lovely garden. You know, the sultans, they maintained beautiful parks and gardens. So here there was a beautiful garden. And now he decided he was a little anxious. How would his son look? What he would have learned? And, and, and maybe it's time for me to give, my, give up my throne and, and see my young son take over the throne. So he put his hands on his back and he began to walk up and down, up and down, up and down. That path. He walked, he walked, he walked and walked and walked and walked. And that night was a full moon night. Now, as he was walking, suddenly there was a shadow that passed. <laughs> 
And nobody could see that person except here a lot of Nanika Dula, Manchika Bula, yeah, Brakadabra. And suddenly, the Sultan, who was sitting on a chair in the garden, when the shadow passed and said, Zalika Dula, Manchika Bula, Brakadabra, he suddenly became stiff. became a stone. She just became a stone statue. The rains. The thunder continued. And the rain continued. And it all fell on that stone statue. The lights went out of the palace. And early morning, the Begum got up and she wondered what had caused such a stormy night. She saw all the lights off and she went out. <gasps> she couldn't bear to see that stone statue of her husband. And she said, oh, I am And as she started crying, that was when our prince, Prince Ahmad, was actually returned. <laughs> he was such a happy person. He said, Tane Tane ki kon, kon badai, dekat naya no me mati milai. He said, Tane Tane ki kon. And he was returning. And he was returning singing a song. And he was riding on his camel. And then he got off that camel. And he saw all the lights off. He was wondering. And he only heard the crying sound. He ran into the palace. He first went looking for his father. He went into the car and there he saw his mother, his mother crying and all his sisters crying and everyone just shut out the lights and they were crying and he saw the statue of the Sultan. Now, Prince Ahmed, he had gone to learn, remember? Now he came back a very wise and mature man. He didn't react. He just watched. He was concerned. He was compassionate. He touched his mother and he told his mother, Mama, Ami, don't cry. Don't cry. I will find an answer. Nothing is forever. And his mother was very happy to hear her son say that, and now he was 16, all of 16. So he looked at his father's statue. Now, let me tell you, he had learned three things. Now you remember this, okay? Because I'm going to ask you later. He learned three things when he went into that desert. One, how to count the stars in the sky and how to listen to what the stars had to say. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that kind of education. The second thing he had learned is nothing is forever. Lovely. Okay. So the second thing that he had learned was the language of the birds and animals, especially the birds. So when any bird would talk, he knew what the bird was talking. The third thing he learned was how to defend himself. Right? So he could defend himself. He knew the language of nature. He knew how to count the stars in the sky. So that night, he told his mother, don't worry. He went out 
and he watched the stars and the galaxy and he walked in the same park there was not a sound except one sound that came from the pole star and that sound was go to the land of the crocodiles and the king of the crocodiles will give the answer the answer to change the sultan into a human being now go sun said that which came from heaven he was happy he didn't want to waste one moment the next day he got ready but not as a prince he put on some tattered clothes like a beggar he asked his mother for some food because he didn't know when he's going to return and his mother said oh hello you just come back you're my only son i don't want to lose you he said mama don't be so emotional i'm going to find a solution for our father don't you want me to go and his mother said i, I-, I think you should he said ami can you give me some food give me a little bag of food you know in those days in the cloth tied some chapatis so he wore that beggar's clothes and he set off but before he set off there was a sister suraya and she said no no bhaiya you can't go now bhaiya not now you just came back you, otherwise i'm coming with you he looked at her and he said i wish i could take you with me but you will be in trouble no bhaiya i'm coming with you okay let me do one thing you want me you with me right yes i want to be with you no you can't be with me but let me give you something he gave her a golden tray now it was not really golden but you know something that looks like gold the color of gold i'm sure you all know something that's like the metal color of gold it's brass so almost like gold a brass plate and there were six egg shaped white marble stones how many six marble shaped white stones on that big brass plate he said keep watching this any time i am in trouble these six eggs will become black and that time you will know the answer where to come and find me okay bhaiya he gave her that yes very true you're right he gave the brass plate with six egg shaped white marbles and he said mati kahe kumhar ko tu kya ronde mohi ek din aisa hoega main rondungi to hi aaye hai so jayenge raja rang fakir ek simhasan chad chale ek bande sansi and now he set off and na 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 tun na 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 he was a happy man and he went he walked and walked and walked and walked and he ran and he walked and he walked and he walked because he was so used to walking and he walked a long distance until he felt very hungry and now he sat down under a huge tree and that tree had long roots and you know what tree that was it was as tall as heaven and the roots went deep down into the earth and he sat on under the shade of that tree he ate his tapati he was so hungry he gobbled it and after he ate ah uh, he felt so sleepy but then he said no i have to go on i have to go to the land of the crocodiles now but i don't know the way how do i go to the land of the crocodiles and then the tree said if you go straight you take a left and you take a right at the crosswords 
you will find another tree who will show you the way. And so he got up. He thanked that banyan tree. And he walked. Yes, you're right. He walked straight. And he took a left. That's right. Took a right. And at the crossroads, what did he see? Another tree, which was full of uh, fruits, which was like the cherry tree. Now, after that, he saw a dead end. He couldn't see anything. He said, oh my God, where's the river? Where are the crocodiles? There was a mist. The cherry tree dropped some fruits and he ate. And as he ate the fruits, the mist cleared. And there he saw a huge lake. And when he opened his eyes after eating that tree, he suddenly saw no God. What is he going to look for? He's going to look for the king of the crocodile, but not yet. He saw one crocodile. <laughs> Was ready to gobble anything. And now, when he opened his eyes, he was actually sitting on the crocodile. The crocodile opened his mouth. He said, are you going to eat me? The crocodile said, no, I've had my fill. But I always keep my mouth open, you know. I know what you're looking for. I know you want to meet our king. Yeah, that's right. Come along, I'll take you across this pond, he said. Not pond, it's a lake. And so. In Simon's sat and the crocodile went. <laughs> Across that. And he took his Ahmed to the king of crocodiles. The king of the crocodiles was waiting for Prince Ahmed. And when he went to the king of the crocodiles, he said, you, you know the magic word. You, 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 you know the magic word. You know, you know, I know you know because the stars told me that. And, and the trees led me the way. And now my, my father, the sultan, the king, his highness will soon become a man again. Tell me, tell me that secret. Now, what had happened is, you see, we all have emotions, isn't it? So, he was getting a little emotional, Prince Ahmed, especially when he saw the crocodile. There was a little fear that ran through him. Now, he went to the king, and even when he went near to the king, and the king wanted to whisper something, he was a little scared. And the king of the crocodiles, he just whispered something in his ear. That was the secret mantra. That was the secret. Yay! But wait, said the king of the crocodiles. Because you were scared. Because you had fear in you. You know what happened? Those white marbles on that big brass plate. How many? You know. Six. They have turned black. And Princess Suraya is coming, looking for you. Yeah, so, 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 I, 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 I can go, I can, I can stop her near the trees and I can take her back. No. He said, you know, we are ruled by a king. What? There is a king for you? Yeah, he, he, he's called the crocodile hunter king. He has two horns. So that king of the crocodile. And that hunters had come into the forest and he's taken away Princess Suraya with him because she's so beautiful. <gasps> now, if you want to rescue, you have to do that first before you go back with the mantra back to the Sultan. <laughs> oh my God. And he said, I can do you a favor. I can take you across and leave you on the banks. But let me tell you one more. That king is not a very good king. So you know, you have to flatter him. Okay. 
So McLean and Rags he went to the gates. And the soldier said, No, and there are nice up there. I'm just a beggar. I just want to ask something of the king. Okay, go. But then one of the soldiers said, No, no, no. How can a beggar enter? In the meanwhile, the king of the crocodile hunters had two more. That he was sitting on a big throne. And he had a daughter. And this daughter looked at Prince Ahmed. Because Prince Ahmed was such a handsome man. And she told the guards, let him in. Let him in. So naturally the guards let him in. So now Prince Ahmed came. And he came before the king. The king of the crocodile hunters. And the king was like, ah, you are the very ugly man. He had his feet outside and he had all his hair on all the, and he had two horns and he was laughing and he was eating. <laughs> now, Prince Ahmed said, wow, that laughter is the most beautiful laughter in the world. Those two horns, they look so good on you. You are such a handsome king. Because he saw his sister. And now he had to please that king. So he started praising him. And the king looked and stared at Prince Simon. He said, oh, those eyes. They are better than the stars that twinkle at night in the sky. What beautiful eyes. Now the king said, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. And he kept praising him and praising him. And the king of the crocodile hunter said, what can I do for you? Nah. King Simon said, uh, um, there is the, the, my sister. Uh, can you please send her back? Because she's my sister. The king looked at his sister and said, okay, go. She ran and she hugged Prince Ahmed. And just at that time, the king turned to the left and there he saw his daughter. And his daughter was looking with adoration at the prince. Ah. He said, stop! You cannot take your sister and go. Unless you marry my daughter. Ah. Now, Princess Suraya was hugging her brother. And in his ears she said, say yes, say yes, say yes. Otherwise, we can't escape. So Prince Ahmed agreed. He said, okay, I'll marry you. He said, tomorrow night is the wedding. Uh -uh. But he was a clever, wise, intelligent king. He said, both of you will not be together. Lock them up in two towers. And only during the wedding, they can come for the wedding ceremony. So they were both locked up in the towers. Now Prince Ahmed, remember? He knew the language of the birds and the animals. And it was at this time that Prince, Princess Sulaya, his sister, she was crying. She didn't know what to do. And she saw a bird at her tower. And she wrote a letter for her brother and sent it with that bird. It was a huge bird. And that bird had five colors. It was one of the most beautiful birds. And the bird flew and came to Prince Ahmed. Prince Ahmed, he understood what the bird was saying. Which means the sister had written that I will meet you at this ceremony. And now Prince Ahmed said, Another note with that bird saying, meet me in the horse's stable. So the night of the wedding arrived. The same full moon night. And the stars were twinkling. So Prince Ahmed was brought to the palace. And the king, the king of the crocodile hunters was so happy. 
he was drinking and he was eating and yeah oh, 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 and celebrating oh, 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 he was so happy and he ate so much he feasted so much that he didn't know that in the middle of the night prince zain had slowly slipped and went to the horse stable and princess suraya she also slipped and she went to the horse stable and what do you think happened next of course prince zain got on to that horse and his sister on his back and they rode that horse as fast as they could before that the king woke up and the king woke up and he said oh my god where are they oh my god he's cheated me follow them soldiers come on follow and all the soldiers got on to their horses and they chased him and chased him and chased him and chased him he went across that pond that lake and the crocodiles helped him to sail through and then the doctor still the soldiers were and they were so close in victory remember he, so when they came that what happened is a cherry tree was so happy to see prince hamad and dropped out all the past he came is <laughs> ahmad and princess suraya when the palace lit and prince ahmad reached the palace and again he went that night to that stone statue of his father and the begum was waiting he went and he said salikum dula benjika bula kata and when he chanted that holy mantra suddenly the stone statue of the sultan understand he looked at his son and he said oh i'm so happy to meet you my son and am also very happy to see his father alive he also did one more he was so smart he took a little bit of the clouds he took a little bit of the wind he took a little bit of the powder the colors from all the elements right he made a magic potion and he and when he did that yeah! <laughs> that shadow that witch that wizard we don't know what disappeared forever and now everyone was very happy and there was a lot of celebration in that palace and they were so happy and sultan decided it was time to give his throne to his son but now what happens to that daughter the king of the crocodile hunters realized oh prince i know is a very intelligent man and since my daughter anyway likes him let me make peace so he did come he made peace with them and that daughter did marry prince ahmed and so prince ahmed and the baker they lived there for many many years and they ruled the kingdom very well mati kahe kumhar ko to kya rounde mohi because the mulla came back and he sang in praise se kudine sa hoye ga main roondu ki to hi and so everyone lived happily ever after <laughs>
wonderful wonderful thanks for that story great journey totally through the deserts and the trees and the crocodiles and everything but more importantly i think it is a wonderful story of compassion um yes. i think there was a great brother sister relationship there was a great uh, level of empathy towards understanding nature and culture and everything together beautiful the very beautiful story too can you please yeah. sing that song for us the time the road one before you go. Then tell me a story tell Papa. me a story ah, yes i will i will think so rest for a while now the night is young time is short and the road is long tell me a story i'll sing you a song for tomorrow the road will be calling us soon for tomorrow the road will be calling us soon